innovative and steady circle is back with a very sumptuous and imposing webinar. Industrial applications of machine learning and future trends. Waste Innovative and Study Circle is presenting this exciting webinar in collaboration with IEEE IES chapter Mute Jamshuru. So grab the advantages of machine learning and future trends by attending this webinar with full of attention. On behalf of Quist Academic, uh, Quist Innovative and Study Circle, I extend my warm welcome to our keynote speaker, Mr. Ehtisham Raza. He is AI and ML engineer with experience of three years working in a fine tech to solve the issues of financial institutes by utilizing AI and ML algorithms and techniques. So without wasting any time, I would request Mr. Ehtisham Raza to start the session. Uh, sir, over to you. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Good evening. First of all, thank you Shreve and all your team for inviting me for this wonderful webinar. So in today's webinar, we are going to talk about the machine learning how machine learning is evolving with the passage of time. In these days we see the machine learning is in boom. Everyone is talking about machine learning. If you go to social media, we'll be seeing a lot of application, lot of blogs, lot of books are available on the internet. So we are going to understand what is machine learning, how it is impacting our society, how it is impacting our technology, how we can use machine learning to solve our problems which we face in our daily life and what are the applications of machine learning and what are the future trends of this machine learning. So let me start sharing my screen without wasting any time. So you guys can just let me know if my screen is visible. So I will go ahead and just start my session. So just let me know. Shweb, can you let me know if my screen is visible so I can yes, go ahead? Yes, the screen is visible. You can go ahead. OK, thank you so much, Shweb. So industrial applications of machine learning and future trends, the rising science. So our today's agenda is we are going to talk about the introduction of machine learning. What is machine learning? The types of machine learning, what are types of machine learning? Third is we're going to talk about the industrial applications of machine learning and the fourth and the last one we're going to talk about the future trends of machine learning. Before going ahead, let me start my introduction. Start with my introduction. I am Ahsham Raza. I am EL AIML engineer working in a FinTech with over experience of three, three plus years where I will I am using machine learning and AI algorithms to solve the problem which arise at a financial institute. So when you are a financial institute, you have to be very 100%, 110% secure. So no, or not only any not any other field can help you to secure your financial institute, only the ML comes here. So I am working from last three plus years. That's a very exciting field, FinTech, which combines the technology and financial services together and you make a problem which helps your financial services. So I'm AIML engineer as well. I'm a data trainer and coach at Analyst HQ where I also provide the data training, machine learning trainings, deep learning trainings, different courses I am available to provide. So what is machine learning? Let's start ahead. Machine learning is basically a set of automatic learning methods. You are training your machine with the set of some learning methods. Let me make it more simple with the passage of time. We'll be getting more in detail, but machine learning, you define set of rules and you pass those rules to your machine. Basically, machines are your algorithm, not not any hardware we are talking about. We are talking about, about all the software. So machine is basically a software which you train based on the set of rules and by passing by analyzing those set of tools your machine understand okay this kind of problem if I happen what i have to behave scientific study of algorithms and statistical models that computer systems use to effectively perform a specific task without using effectively explicit instruction relying on pattern and inference instead so machine learning is basically a combination of algorithms and statistical study which use a computer systems a computer system utilize those statistical study models and algorithms to train their system based on their specific data and underline and find out those hidden patterns from the, those data and make predictions. So with maybe this definition may be too much for you, but we will going ahead. You will be understand in more depth. So no need to worry about this. I'm going to explain you everything in detail. 
So machine learning is basically a set of tools. You define a set of tools if certain kind of conditions going to happen, how your system is going to predict. Let's say if I have to predict the price of certain, uh, let's say I have to predict the price of a car. So what I have to provide to my machine learning model is I have to tell what is the feature, what are the features of the car, how many doors of car have, is the car is SUV, is the car is sedan, is the car is hatchback, how many, what is the color of the car, what is the model of the car, when the car was manufactured, what was the market price. Based on this, I will enter all these input features to my machine learning model and I will be getting the prediction of the car price for my dependent variable. So machine learning, instead of writing a code, you feed a data to generic algorithm. In machine learning, the data is the oil of your project. So if you have a data, then you can only able to implement your machine learning system. So all your machine learning system is dependent on the data. If you have a data, you can train your machine learning model and you can build any kind of logic based on your data given. But if you don't have a data, you cannot perform your. So that's why these days are called data is the oil. Data is the gold of upcoming time because you can do anything. If you have a data, you can perform any kind of task using machine learning if you have a data. So what kind of task machine learning do classification task? Let's say you have a student class. You have to divide the students into two groups, A and B. Based on the attributes of the students, let's say a student is a good, his, he do homework on his time, he is good in exams, he is, he is always present in the class, he, he is always available in the class, all these kind of inputs. If this, all this kind of inputs, so he needs to go into the class A. And if the student is not doing very well in his studies, he's not good in, in class, he's not good in extracurricular activities, he's not good in doing his homework, so he is going to be do the in the class B. So we usually do this kind of analysis by our own mind, but think about you have to train a machine, you have to train the such kind of algorithm which can do this kind of task. So we have to provide a data. So let's say you have tra trained your machine learning model to perform a classification task. When any new student comes here, you will enter the data of that student into your machine and your machine will be suggesting you this student has very good marks. This student has a very good uh, performing, very good in his homework. He's attentive in class, so he needs to go into the, uh, the group of A. Another student come, he's not very good in activity. Doing well in exam, so you need to go into the class B. So based on this, we do classification. So just like we human do uh, classification, we do evaluations of different groups based on our own understanding. So similarly, if you want to your machine, your algorithm to perform this kind of task, you have to provide the data to your machine. So based on the data, your machine will be learning and it will be performing the task. Similarly, if you have to predict either a person is having a cancer or not, so this is a classification task. Either a person has in having cancer, yes or no. So what you can do if you have to perform this task using a machine learning, you can train, you can take a data of the cancerous people and having no, no cancer. So let's say for the cancerous people, their tumor size may be bigger than as compared to the normal people. Their skin may be getting hard, uh, reddish. Their skin color is getting also dull. All these kind, they are getting hair loss. Their BMI is getting low. Their weight is getting decreased. Their insulin is getting decreased. If these all these features are a person having, so it means he can have a cancer. A person is having healthy, don't have a hair loss. His tumor size is don't have any tumor. His cell size is just like a normal size. Nothing is irregular in his body. So it means he don't have a tumor. So if you want to perform this classification, not you want to train your machine learning model. If you want to do this, you have to provide this data so your machine learning can do the classification based on the training. Similarly, regression task. What is a regression task? Predict of a target value based on the input value. Let's say you want to predict a house of a price of a house. You will have to provide the number of rooms, how many number of kitchens, how many number of bathrooms. Is the car is the house having garage? Is the house having mm, garden is the house is in that specific area what is the area of the house what is the circumference whatever the or is the house is single portion double portion whatever the 
so based on this we have to predict as the number of uh, number of rooms increasing the price of the house is also increasing as the house is double story so the house of the uh, the price of the house is also increasing so based on all this task all these parameters we have to predict is what is going to the price of the house so this is a regression task in which you are predicting a numerical value so you are getting a numerical value so if you want to perform a regression task through your machine learning algorithm you can have multiple algorithms which can help you do it so similarly we have to obtain a data for the houses prices then we can pass this data to our machine learning algorithm so your machine learning algorithm will be understanding the patterns and once the model get trained it will be making a prediction okay so if the house having this number of rooms this number of bathrooms this number of kitchens the house has a garage the house also has a the garden the house is double story it is the area of the house is there so this can be the price of the house so this algorithm can help you if you go to different website they give basically give you to enter your price enter your this and this and they give you specific uh, prediction how this is working the back end of their uh, their back end is plugged with the machine learning so they are doing all this thing based on the machine learning so they are basically making a prediction taking your input and making a prediction but they have already trained their model based on the data now they are using the model trained model and making a prediction on the real world so similarly this is the regression task in which we are predicting a continuous value continuous value means just like a price height anything classification means it can be yes or no true or false fail pass these kind of things is a classification task clustering clustering is basically a grouping you are going to group the students into base on their attribute base on their behavior based on their based on their marks so you have to group those students so how are you going to do you are going to compare the each student with it itself let's say you are uh, comparing two students so one is a good student one is a bad student so you will be saying there is a dissimilarity in the features of the students so you're not going to make them in a single group you're going to make a separate group you will be creating a first group as a good student second group as a as a bad student and you got another student who is just normal so you utilize you realize it's so he is not falling in the both groups so you're going to create another group which is going to be a uh, group of normal student so based on this clustering we are just doing grouping we are finding uh, patterns hidden patterns we observing their patterns and we are seeing how they are similar with each other those data points those people those students who are similar with each other let's say all the bad students are similar with each other so they're going to classify they're going to be in a one cluster similarly the all the good students have a similar properties with each other so they are going to be in a same cluster similarly all the average students have the have the same properties so they are going to be in a bad cluster so this is a clustering which in which we do our clustering this is these are the three main tasks which machine learning do so what is a machine learning in flow chart we see we obtain our data set in the data set not all of your data is the useful for you so you have to retrieve the only the useful features from your data once you got the useful features you perform the data processing if you have to perform the data cleaning if you have to perform the data wrangling if you have to perform the feature engineering all this feature engineering the feature extraction perform then you apply the feature scaling feature selection once you perform all this data preparation step then you go for the modeling here you apply the machine learning algorithm whatever the task you are going to perform based on this you define your machine learning algorithm and you train your machine learning algorithm once your machine learning algorithm is trained you are going to evaluate the performance you are going to check is the my model is performing very well is my prediction is really the actual value or not if my prediction is not equivalent to the actual value so it means my model is not performing very well so i have to go back until my model is not giving me satisfactory results i will be keep iterating this step so this is the life cycle of the machine learning project any machine learning project you obtain a data set you retrieve the useful features from the data set once you get the you perform the data processing once you perform the data process you go for the feature extraction feature extraction means you're going to use only those relevant features let's say you are going to uh, perform the you have to predict the price of a house we are need to only keep those features which are making role in prediction of the price of the house you are not going to use let's say some other relevant feature irrelevant feature you are not going to use it there so you have to be very sure those algorithm those features which you are using are making impact on your prediction 
once you got this, you have to perform the feature scaling because feature scaling is required for any machine learning algorithm. So once you do this, you do the modeling, you apply different algorithm. If you are performing a regression task, maybe you can use sport vector regression. Maybe you can do random forest regressor, any kind of regression algorithm you can apply. Once you train the model, you can evaluate and you can tune your model. Once your model is giving you a good accuracy, then you can go for the deployment and monitoring. So deployment is the last phase comes when you pass the when you approve your model for your production because all the time not your model is giving you a good accuracy you have to tweak and you have to retrain your model again and again so once your model is giving you good accuracy you can go and you can simply apply for the deployment so once you apply for the deployment it's not like that you have to you just you created a feature you just created a mobile application you can maybe have some bugs you can have some errors in the future same like machine learning algorithms can also have the bugs can have different problems just like data drift concept drifts these kind of problems can arrive in your model so you have to keep monitoring your model on the weekly or maybe the monthly basis so you can make sure your model is utilized perfectly so this is the whole life cycle of the machines uh, machine learning or machine learning bugs next is types of machine learning there are main three types of machine learning basically there are four types but we are going to talk about the three main types which is mainly used supervised machine learning algorithm unsupervised machine learning reinforcement so we're going to talk about the supervised learning first give input data to design algorithm give required output to the algorithm define the way of extract features predict the output based on the features compare the predicted output with actual output fine tune the model so give the input to the so what we have why it's called supervised learning because let's say you have to train a model to predict a person is having a cancer or not so you're going to obtain the data of the cancer and in which we'll have a independent variables and a dependent variable dependent variable is your output variable in which is dependent on the independent variables let's say let me explain you dependent variable is basically cancer yes or no the cancer is dependent on certain features like cell size, the age, the utilization of insulin, the utilization of free radicals, the utilization of et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So all these are your independent variables and cancer is a dependent variable. So if the person is having an irregular shape of the tumor and he's having a hair fall and he's having this, this kind of diseases, so he can have, he have, have a cancer so this is all dependent the cancer is all dependent on some other features so in the supervised learning you have a dependent variables and also the independent variable so in which you train your machine learning algorithm so your machine learning pass okay so if person is having a, this kind of this size of tumor this number of issue with his age this is the hair fall having a skin uh, the rashes on his skin, the dark circles on his skin, so he is having a cancer. Another person comes whose tumor size is just normal. He don't have any hair loss. He don't have any age issue. He don't consume the insulin. He don't consume. His skin is healthy, so he don't have a. So your machine learning finds okay. So if this kind of data occurs, so this person can have a cancer. So basically, this your algorithm can help you to predict. A person can have a cancer with this input disease or not. So this is basically a life saving algorithm can be you can be produced from using a machine learning. So in this algorithm, you have a input variables. Input variables are those variables which used to predict the output. So output variable is cancer. So you also pass the input and output variable. So in supervised learning, you pass the input variable and output variable. And once you train your machine learning algorithm at the time of evaluation, you check this was my input and this was my output what is the input passed to my model and what is the output made by my model is this input and output is same or not if it is not same the model again go back and reiterate itself if we come to the unsupervised machine unsupervised machine learning algorithm so input to the we give input to our design algorithm but we don't have the output your model is not given model is the is not given with the output the model job is to automate to find out the hidden trends find out the similarities from your data to make the output so let's say you are going to perform the uh, clustering 
you have three different uh, you have a students in your class and you have to make a cluster of the students you have to make three clusters good bad and normal so how are you going to do this you're going to pick two students let's say you got the good student and the normal student so you can comparing the two students with each with each other so is this student both students have a good marks no good student have a very good marks normal student have just normal marks so they don't have any similarity so you're going to fall them into some other cluster so similarly you're going to pick the bad and good student is these two students have the same number of uh, same marks in the exams no so they are different so you're going to fall them into some other cluster now you're going to pick good two good students is two students have the same iq level same understanding of the class same uh, attendance same atten attention to class yes they do have a same these similarities so they are going to classify into the same cluster so this is what the iterative approach they apply the iterative approach and keep comparing until your all the data sample does not get into the cluster of the specific category so this is was unsupervised so here you don't have a output so you don't have a, you don't compare the prediction of your model at the end of the uh, at the end of the prediction so you just simply fine tune your model so this is unsupervised in which your machine learning model work on your data by uh, by itself and it finds out the feature what is reinforcement learning agent learns how to behave so reinforcement learning is basically the approach which is applied in the robotics maybe you see the robotics they on the start the if you talk about the boost on the very famous company which they have invented a lot of uh, robotics in the start those robotics maybe was not able were not performing very well in the environment how they got this kind of perfection the only reason is they had the reinforcement learning algorithms equipped they basically interacted with the environment they by interacting with the environment they learn from the environment so after interacting with the environment they learn from the environment and they made their self perfect for the environment so all the time these algorithms are learning from you so this algorithms are used in creating robotics in the automatic automation car automatic um, vehicles in which the algorithms always learning from from the environment so anytime they are interacting with the environment they are learning with the environment so and from the learning they are making more more and more intelligent uh, if you create a model if you create a robot and you just set and you create uh, uh, and you created with using reinforcement learning and today you set the environment uh, the robot into the i'm not saying robot i'm call it agent because in the reinforcement learning you call your model as an agent so if you set your agent free into the environment your an agent will be going and interacting with the things and it will be understanding how i have to walk how what i have to behave if that certain uh, condition happen what i have to do so this is a reinforcement learning in which your agent is learning from the environment so learning and if something goes bad with the agent it makes it basically give a penalty to itself and based on the penalty it keeps it maintains in policies so they don't make a uh, create plans they are called policies so they update their policies so these are the three main types of reinforcement learning uh, uh, machine learning supervised unsupervised and reinforcement learning types of machine learning i'm just giving a visual understanding so here i am passing my model my machine learning algorithm this is a duck i am telling my algorithm this is a duck so my algorithm will keep in my mind if i get any object like this so it is a duck so i am understanding just like you are telling a new 6 months or 1 year old baby see this is a duck this is how it looks like so your baby is learning from that example so similarly machine learning do the same thing machine learning is a baby in which you are training it in which you are training it with a example so your baby is learning okay the shape i have is the shape of this duck is look like that if i get a picture of any animals it looks like that so it can be a duck so your machine learning algorithm do the same thing it takes out the feature of the duck and keep in mind if any image comes if you see the any image if you show the any image to your machine learning model it will say it is a duck similarly it is also a duck so you are passing a different images of your of animals of the duck and not duck 
and any new image come to the machine learning model, it will classify. No, not duck. So I am passing a image of rabbit and I'm saying uh, this is my label. This is my input data and this is my output. My output should be this. So if I pass this image, my output should be this. So here I'm passing my input and output also. So this is my image. This is a rabbit. This is not a duck. So I am passing. If this comes, you have to say this is not a duck. If this comes, you have to say this is not a duck. OK, I train my model. My predictive model is ready. Now let's go and have make a prediction. So at the time of prediction, when I pass an image of a duck, my algorithm will be telling me, my machine learning model will be telling me it is a duck. So unsupervised learning in a clustering algorithm. So here you don't have a label data in which your data is not labeled. I am just passing my images and my machine learning algorithm is basically finding out the resemblance of features in the images and finding out which animal it is. So if you see this, the cluster is made of the ducks and this cluster is for the rabbit and this cluster may be some other animal. So this is unsupervised. Here I am not telling which animal it is. My machine learning algorithm is basically going and find out the pattern, hidden pattern, the features of the images and finding out based on similarities which animal it is. So this is how unsupervised learning. And reinforcement, uh, is the input is apple it's a mango the my agent respond i am going to tell them i'm going to give the feedback to my model is no you are a wrong you it's a apple so my model will keep in my mind and it will always remains in the mind now once a model once my agent did a mistake it it will learn from me it will learn from the environment in why in the environment I am including all the people are including who will be telling them you are doing a mistake. So once it do a mistake, it will be. It will be correctly. It will be rectified by the other people in the environment and it will always remain in mind when any new picture, any objects looks like Apple comes in front of the agent. It will automatically say this is an Apple. So this is how reinforcement learning goes in the start. Maybe the memory of the agent will be very small but with the passage of time your agent will be very intelligent with the passage of time phase machine learning phases basically machine learning has total three phases algorithm is gain, given with the training data to find the patterns and value of parameters match the predicted output and the actual output and find the loss tune to itself to optimize the loss once the algorithm algorithm parameters are found, algorithm is trained. So in the training phase, you pass the algorithm and the data to find out the patterns and the values to, from the data. Algorithm get trained from the data. And once the algorithm training is done, it basically makes uh, calculate the errors made by the uh, made by the model. And once the errors are calculated, the errors are minimized by checking different uh, evaluation uh, parameters. What does in the validation do? You just simply evaluate the model performance. Is my model is performing very well or not? So algorithm is given with that validation data to find out the para, find out the output. And if your algorithm is performing very well, really exactly the real values. So you can say my model has passed the validation test. Testing phase. Once you train your machine learning model, you have to test it before going into the production. So in the testing, you pass just sample data, a very sample data, maybe 20 or 30 percent of the data to your model and you check if your model is performing very well. So you can say yes, my model performance is really good. So these are the three phases of. Machine learning applications of machine learning in different domains. If you will go for a virtual assistant, personal assistant, these days chatbots, customer care agent, all these are the applications of machine learning, natural language processing. If you go for the different algorithms, they generate the captions, all these things. This is all because of the natural language processing, deep learning, which is also a field of machine learning is a field of machine learning simulating simulations. You see the simulation of your objects is all because of the machine learning. Robotics, if you talk about the Internet of Things, graph analytics, visualization, audio analytics, all are the application of the machine learning. Application areas of machine learning. If you go for the supervised learning, what you can do you, in the supervised learning, you can do the fraud detection. You can do the image classification. You can do the customer retention. You're going to understand is my customer is going to retention or not diagnostics in the regression. Uh, 
tasks you can perform the forecasting you can perform the prediction you can perform the process optimization you can generate new insights if you go for the reinforcement learning you can go for the robot robot navigation skill acquisition learning tasks game ai real time decision so all the other areas where machine learning can perform really well in unsupervised you can go for customer segmentation you have to customize your segment you have to uh, you have to segment your customers based on their attributes you can do this targeted marketing if you have to market market your specific customers you can do this recommendation systems yes if you see the recommendation system on youtube all these things are the examples of machine learning big data visualization yes dimensionality reduction now data is becoming big and being so it comes under the unsupervised learning so if you want to perform the visualization if you want to understand your big data you can use this machine learning meaningful compression if you have to compress your data to a meaningful understanding you can do this structure discovery if you have to understand the structure of the biological features into the data of dna so you can simply understand so these are all the areas where your machine learning can be applied so let's go and see industrial applications of machine learning there are a lot of industrial applications of machine learning but i'm going to talk about only the famous applications of machine learning first is supply chain optimization second is autonomous vehicles and fraud detection and robotics fraud detection customer support and chatbots predictive analytics healthcare system agriculture system so these are the main things where ai machine learning is utilized massively so let's go and see machine learning and supply chain so supply chain is the backbone of any project if you are any details of any smes of any uh, any business so if you optimize your supply chain obviously you can achieve your better sales so machine learning how can be used in supply chain if you have to perform the demand prediction let's say you want to analyze the historical data of your market trends what are the external factors are happening and based on this you want to predict the future demand let's say you have a data of your supply of your business you are working in a business side and you are in a manufacturing company and you are manufacturing let's say you are manufacturing any products you are manufacturing cosmetic products so you have seen there is a specific time in a year where your sales automatically getting increased and there is a specific time in a year where sales going decrease so what are the reason i don't know maybe if i have a machine learning equipped in my supply chain i can understand those patterns i can understand those those trends in my data which can help me to understand okay if my this time is coming i can increase the production so i can maximize the i can capture my customers obviously if i produce enough i can obviously provide those goods to my customers so if that time and similarly if that time is coming in which my customers are don't likely to purchase maybe the middle of the year my customers are getting the number of customers maybe get less the purchase of the customers get less so if i get the understand about this i'm seeing this trend over the last 10 years so it means if it happens in last 10 years so the trend is going to also occur in the next upcoming year so my machine learning algorithm can give me a accurate prediction if you produce this number of demands of the customer so you will never go the overstock stock and you will never go the understock so obviously there is a if you produce enough enough amount of stock there is a issue maybe you not able to handle that not meeting the demand of the customer so you maybe can end up a loss of your customer so both things can impact your business first can make impact on your uh, negative impact on your business and second is maybe you will end up in a churn of your customer your maybe customer will be no more coming to you because he will see he or she will be see you are not giving them enough products so how they going to come up with in the next season so to make sure you are making enough demand of your customers so you have to be sure what i how much i have to produce so if you have the historical data if you have the data of your market trend if you have the data of the external factors not only the 
market trend can help you but some external factors can also help you to predict the future demand for the products so if you do this obviously you can produce only according to the required uh, required amount of the customer so you at that time you will never have an issue of overstocking and understocking so this here machine learning can help you in supply chain inventory management ml algorithms can optimize inventory levels by considering factors like lead time supply performance production schedules that ensures the right amount of stock is available at the right time obviously maintaining your management of your inventory is quite a tricky task you don't know what to keep in your inventory and what to not so if you know in machine learning in machine learning you have a data if you have a data of your inventory over the last 10 years maybe 20 years 30 years the more data you have the more precise you are going to be have in the future so if you can produce an algorithm if you can write an algorithm which can perform the which can perform the prediction of the supplier production need so it can easily automatically ensure the right amount of stock is going to be in your inventory seasonal and trend analysis machine learning if you have to analyze the trend what are the reasons my sales is going up in that specific time period in this specific season and what are the trend impacting my sales so if you have to understand this kind of information this can be a machine learning can be a good tool to you and use in your business in your supply chain which can help you to easily understand what are the seasonal effects i'm getting which is making my sales high risk management ml models can assess the risks associated with stock optimization decision considering the factors like economic condition geopolitical events and supply reliability obviously if you have us in the stock optimization you are not sure how much stock i am going to keep if any political if any geographical if is there any going to be any flood if i am li living in an area i my my invent my warehouse is in an area where i can have a issue of flood i can have a issue of excess rain which can damage my stocks in my warehouse so i have to be very sure how much amount should i keep so it will be sell till that time so if you have a machine learning you can just simply evaluate the risk so which can eliminate the risk from your business customer segmentation obviously in supply chain you have customer from different area if you are a distributor let's say i am a distributor of a unilever i am supplying different products so unilever have 100 plus products so i have to make a customer segmentation i have to customize my set customers based on the segmentation i have to create a segmentation of my different customer let's say for my abc product this is the category of my customers which i have to cater for my C, def custom products i have to cater this kind of so if you customize your customer if you perform the segmentation of your customer you will be very sure what kind of products you are going to you are going to you, you are going to deliver to your to your customers so you if you do the segmentation of your customer it can really help you to cater the demands of your customers so because now you are thinking for the customer now you are going to be very sure about your customer from which category my customer belong to so if you creating a diapers so you going to be very sure i'm going to meet the demand from kids from 0 to 5 years old age if you are creating let's say every day so you going to create a demand of specific age category so this is how machine learning can help you to understand your business can improve your business machine learning in robotics and vehicles it is very frequently it is excessively used a lot of machine learning algorithms is helping basically robotics is all an automate auto, auto uh, the autonomous vehicles are all the machine learning is used perception and sensing if you machine if you car if your robot has to understand anything all the sensors are equipped with robot is because is understanding the machine learning algorithms and machine learning algorithm can is taking this data and based on all the sensors once the sensor take a uh, input the perception from the environment the output comes from the machine learning model so machine learning model tells what kind of action you have to perform this so how to navigate into the environment how to 
avoid the obstacles. So because of all this, machine learning is helping the robotics to understand all these things. Object recognition and manipulation. Let's say your robot has to understand, your agent has to understand a specific robot or object like we did before the uh, object recognition. If you want to perform any object recognition, you want to train your robot to, to detect a specific object. And if the specific object is find out, he has to, let's say you are creating a robot in which job is to extinguish the file. So you have to train your machine learning model. You have to train your robot with showing the lot of images of files. So if a file comes in front of the robot, he has to put a word on it because he has saw the file. He has to now put a water on it. So because it's a danger sign, so this the job of this of the robot is to extinguish the fire. So how this can be achievable? Only because of the machine learning. So if you perform the object recognition and manipulation, so machine your robot can understand. Okay, there is a fire in front of me. So what I have to do as I have been trained to extinguish the fire. So my job is to blow the fire. So I am going to bring a water bucket of water and I'm going to throw in it. So your object recognition can help you to prevent the robot from extinguishing the fire. Simultaneous, simultaneous localization and map, mapping. SLAM is basically an algorithm of the machine learning which helps the robot to build a maps of unknown events while simultaneously determining their own position within the maps allowing them to navigate in unfamiliar surroundings. This comes under the unsupervised, this is under the reinforcement learning. SLAM is basically an algorithm which enables your machine learning robot to determine the position where the robot is not familiar with it, so which enables your bot so they can investigate with the current environment so they can determine their position. Task and motion planning. ML algorithms enable robots to plan and execute sequences of actions to complete task efficiently. So robots plan, how the robots are planned, they are equipped with sensors. Those sensors take, uh, uh, send the output to the machine learning algorithm. So machine learning algorithm tells, if this kind of sensation is coming to me, what should the robot do? So it, let's say robot is selling some waves. So waves are coming back to the robot. So it means the waves are getting repelled, are getting equal to the robot. So it means there is any hurdle in coming in front of the robot. So maybe machine learning algorithm can tell to the robot, okay, if this kind of sensation, if the frequency of the sensation means there is maybe a wall in front of coming in front of the robot, so robot has maybe to change his direction. So this kind of task and motion planning can help robots, and these are all because of the machine learning. Autonomous vehicles, perception and object detection. Similarly, here the object detection is also very mandatory because any kind of object is coming in front of the autonomous car. They have to change their path. They have to, if a person is coming, if any pedestrian is coming, if a vehicle is coming, if there is any traffic sign, it means uh, automobile is going and the sign is changed from green to red. So it means the car has to stop. So car must have to apply a brake. So this is all because of the object detection. If the car is detecting the red signal, so it means that way it is possible to do it. Otherwise, your car, if your car don't detect, how it can be possible? Semantic segmentation, obviously segmentation categorizes the different regions in the scene. What we have to, what we have to do, and what we are allowing the cars to better understand in the environment is because of the semantic segmentation of the car. Path planning and decision making obviously to plan a path, an autonomous efficient route, which route will lead a car to reach its destination in less amount of time. In real time driving, what are the favorable paths for the car? If path A and path B, which of the path is going to be lead to his destination without any hurdles, without any traffic condition, without any bad traffic signals? So all this kind of path planning and decision making is all because of the machine learning. So this is how machine learning is used in autonomous vehicles. Machine learning in fraud detection. This is what I do at my job. Anomaly detection. What is anomaly detection? Anomaly just an unusual kind of transaction happens. Just like let's say a person is doing a transaction of thousand rupees, thousand rupees, and suddenly you observe he has done a transaction of two lakh rupees. So why does 
this person don't have the capability to perform this kind of transaction but how this certain transaction happen what's the reason so this kind of unusual patterns may be considered as a outlier so this kind of transaction is called as anomaly detection now there are lot of digital banks all the digital banks job is to make sure is not any kind of anti money laundering happen because they can lost their they can lose their licenses because they are regulated by state bank of pakistan so they have to be very sure no any anti money laundering transaction happen on their platform so they apply this different kind of anomaly detection so any kind of unusual activity happen on their platform they must have to report they must have to check they must have to investigate who has performed this so if their transaction is performing they have to fail this transaction so the transfer of money will be not done transaction monitoring yes if you have to monitor the transaction analyze the transactional data any kind of suspicious activity any kind of past historical data customer behavior you have to understand the transaction monitoring system can be easily use the machine learning algorithm so i am using both anomaly detection and transaction monitoring to help my company to make sure no any kind of fraudulent activities happening at our system identity verification this is what i also do basically when we onboard our customer when we when a customer come to our account when customer come and ask our us we have to they have to create an account so what we ask him we have to you have to upload a picture of your cnic and your selfie so what we do we crop the picture on a cnic and we compare the picture on a cnic with this selfie if the resemblance of the picture and a cnic is same so it means this is a cnic and the person on the selfie is the same so if any kind of resemblance is not coming to the picture and cnic so we mark them we don't let him to open his account so obviously identity verification otherwise if we don't apply the machine learning algorithm we have to ask our person any customer any of our employee to sit and just check the manually each profile there are lot of profile act getting activated on a daily basis so in a in a in a these days no one has a time to check each profile and maybe a chances of mistake uh, can happen so if we apply if you apply this kind of algorithm this kind of machine learning system which can automatically detect fingerprints biometrics behavior analysis so obviously it not only make impact on your business also reduce the cost the pay you have to give that person now you don't need to pay him your algorithm is doing that job so here machine learning can help you to eliminate the fraud so if a person coming who don't his selfie is not having a resemblance with the picture on the cnic so it means this person has took someone else selfie uh, someone else cnic and you know cnic is a very confidential information you cannot share with anyone so if you get if you lost your cnic you get in a trouble so you have to be very sure this person is the same on this so we are going to make sure this person identity verification is really a person who is on the cnic so here how you can use machine learning to perform your identity verification pattern recognition machine learning can detect the pattern associated with non and fraud cases any kind of pattern this is all coming credit card fraud land detection oh yes any kind of credit card fraud land detection going to happen the machine learning can algorithm can detect i think we are having a uh, 10 minutes left so let me go ahead so machine learning customer support so obviously in customer support these day in the last uh, in the in last 5 year there used to be a people who used to sit in a system in a call center they used to assist their customers now these days companies are equipped with the chatbots no one is going to hire a customer case customer support until they are need their business are getting increased then they will hire so chatbots are helping those companies and virtual assistant they are mostly cater the most of the audience so they are basically good thing is they are all, all available 24 by 7 don't need to pay them you, they are just guiding the users they are troubleshooting their problems so chatbots is in customer care are really a good automated ticket routing obviously when you go to any online system they are automatically you going to write up any your complain to any bank any system so they are automated ticket routing so basically they route their ticket 
and you don't have to worry they are out their ticket and they basically go and check the faster resolution of your problem so this is also a is a application of machine learning in customer support churn prediction obviously you're going to analyze the data of the customer support is your customer your customer used to interact with you in the last five months but what's the reason he's not coming and interacting with us he's not getting engaged with us what is the reason so you have to perform the churn prediction you can use speech recognition system different systems can analyze the phone and voice calls insisting agents in understanding the customer issues so machine learning can also have the capability to understand the speech voice calls and messages so they can assist the customer machine learning and predictive analytics sales forecasting if you have to perform the sales of your next upcoming years you will have to perform most of the companies do the machine use machine learning for forecasting their sales based on their previous sale in this year my sales has increased one person so what are the trends i have observed if this trend appears uh, the behave the same in the next year obviously i can at least have my sales increase in 1.3 or 1.2 percent at least customer chain prediction if you have to perform the customer is going to end up or not is still customer is with us or not is this customer is our active customer or not so this kind of analytics you can get from the uh, customer chain prediction maintenance and downtime let's say you're going to have a sensor and you your sensor having some unusual numbers and you will figure and you're seeing this is just uh, ambiguous numbers i'm coming from the and my machines are not giving me this number so you can detect this is my uh, maintenance downtime is required for my this one ml in healthcare this is a very exciting field in healthcare machine learning has been a very great tool for till now let's say you have to predict a person is having a brain tumor or not what you can do you can pass images of a person having with brain tumor and person not having a brain tumor to your machine learning algorithm so machine learning algorithm will understand what kind of person what and if a person is having a brain tumor not we can observe it he maybe you can find out a tumor in his mri image a person with no brain tumor cannot have a tumor in his image so this kind of segmentation you can find out the processing and you can see this my model is so this kind of algorithms are available these people are researchers are are using it for detecting any kind of cancer chest cancer any kind of cancer you have to if you have to check the skin cancer you can take image of a skin and you can pass to your machine learning algorithm so your machine learning algorithm will let you know is this person is having a skin cancer or not based on the study medical image analysis disease diagnosis let's say you pass the number of inputs of your certain let's say you having a symptoms you having a symptoms the pneumonia fever cough this 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 so it may be a machine learning algorithm can help you to assist maybe you having a this disease so to detect a specific disease you having which disease you can enter your symptoms and your machine learning model will give you a disease so machine learning can also do in the healthcare if you have to create a new drug you have to discover a new drug so machine learning algorithm can help you to find out the drug discovery by under, by understanding the chemical compound agriculture in agriculture machine learning is also used maybe you have seen lot of images or lot of videos on youtube someone is using to and the machine learning and agriculture the machines are equipped with different sensors so they are detecting is my fruit is totally ripe or not so based on this they perform the harvesting or not so this is and if you have a pest in your in your crops so you have to perform any kind of pest spray machine learning can algorithm tell can tell you okay this is the time my crops are having pest so throw uh, any kind of pesticide so they can eliminate from the pest future trends of machine learning what are the future trends of machine learning supply chain the supply chain will be getting more involved with the future with the machine learning because machine learning has a potential to eliminate the risk and make the business more increase using the machine learning autonomous obviously in the upcoming year cell 2030 will be seeing a lot of advancement of autonomous vehicles and robotics so this is all because of the machine learning so machine learning has a great potential in this field fraud detection obviously all the banks are going digital maybe you seeing sada pay new naya pay finja 
lot of banks are here now easy pass suggest that you don't know where this best bank exists but your in your phone there is existence so you are not going to their bank you know you are not going to their branches you are dealing with your phone so if you have these kind of banks emis you have to you have a chance of fraud so these kind of in this area in the fraud detection the machine learning is going to be boom so customer support and chatbot obviously where these banks are coming where the digitalization is going here so customer support and chatbots are coming here so more customer engagement will be here so no one is going to call to a customer care center no one has a time no one has a balance people are going to just interact with the chatbots they are helping them to form their issue predictive analytics obviously the future of predictive analytics lies automated feature engineering obviously in post in post engineering so predictive analytics is going to be also the the main which is going to use machine learning healthcare the future of healthcare will be focusing on more personalized medicine through ml driven treatment treatment variable health tech for remote patient yes so maybe they will the research is doing people are doing the research where they can stay at their place and doctor can stay at the hospital they can get this kind of tech gadgets which they can remotely perform the monitoring of the uh, patient so this is all because of the healthcare so all they use the machine learning agriculture future trend in the agriculture is in, include a precision agriculture with ml power sensors and drone for precise resource allocation obviously the resource allocation is the main thing where you have to plant the right thing machine learning can help you smart irrigation system at the what time the soil is getting dry so you can just perform the irrigation automated pest and obviously you cannot do the pest all the time on all the crops you have to do the pest on exactly the same point so machine learning can do and perform the disease detection for sustainable farming practices so all the agriculture is going to use the machine learning algorithm so they can have a better productivity in less amount of time and exact amount of time so these are all about the machine learning we have seen what is a machine learning what are the applications of machine learning and other future trends of machine learning so if you guys have any any question you can please ask i'm here to answer your questions guys if you have any question just raise your hand I think there's a guy who is having a question. Okay, you can please ask. Sir, I have no question, but this is a request that please share the PPT in group. That would be very helpful for us. Okay, we can help you maybe. And also, if you keep another practical session on ML, it will be also very helpful. Uh, actually, your voice is lagging. Can you please repeat it? Yes, sir. Sir, I want to request you that if you uh, keep another session practically, which consists of programming and projects, then it will be very helpful for us. Oh, sure, sure. We can discuss with Shweb and his team. So, if we get time and if the slot, obviously we can. arrange another session thank you for your feedback thank you sir it was an amazing thank you So, guys, uh, anyone have a question from the future trends or the basics of machine learning? You can ask, or you can put in the chat box. Yes, Mustaq Iman, you can ask the question.
Mustaqiman, you can unmute yourself and you can ask the question. Hello, hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. I have one question that uh, please define few features of water quality monitoring using machine learning. Quality how monitoring. We, water quality monitoring. How we uh, implement the machine learning models? Hmm. Okay. So basically, it, it can depend on different kind of features, just like the different ingredients available in your water. What kind of water is required for the your crop? This specific ingredient, what is the pH value of your water? Depends on your business also. What kind of problem you're going to solve? Let's say you're going to consider the wheat crops. So what is the water sufficient for the wheat crops? You can identify and then you can create your machine learning model, which can check is this kind of ingredients is available in my water. And then you can see, yes, the quality of the water is good. If you find these kind of ingredients in your water, you can say the water is contaminated. Is the sodium or chlorium anything available in your water in a high quantity, which is making a bad impact, maybe a crop or any. If you're talking about human drinking water, then you can say, no, this is not usable for the human drinking water. OK, sir, thank you. Uh, I have another question. Yes, please. Uh, why machine learning model perform poor on large data set and why machine learning uh, models perform good on a small data set? Hmm. OK, so let me explain you. Machine learning also has a limited extent of capability. It can work very well if you have a limited amount of data. As your data grows, you have to check is your model can work or your model is going to be overfit. So if you see your model is overfitting and your data is quite big, maybe you need to move to deep learning your kind of algorithms. Because machine learning has a capability of limited extent. OK, sir, bundle of thanks. Very nice and thank you very much. It was a fruitful session for us. Same here, same here. It was a nice learning from you guys. Yes, Hassan. Uh, do you have any questions? So just unmute your mic and ask your question. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, sir, for your uh, presentation. Sir, I have a question in the uh, process of machine learning. Actually, there is a uh, three step, but uh, can you ex uh, explain the validation and test how it occurs, sir? Sure. Any process? Validation and test. Yes, sir. So yes. Only validation. Both sir, validation and testing. OK, OK, OK. So first of all, you train your machine learning model and your model is not trained. Now you have to see how my model is performing. There are two types to check the evaluation of the model. First is validation. In validation, there are different kind of validation techniques, just like k-fold cross validation in which we pass the whole data set, but in a chunks. Let's you create five folds of your data. What you do in the first fold, you pass the 20% data. In the second fold, you pass the third, uh, next 20%, and you keep passing until your all data does not get passed from your model. But in testing data set, you only pass the 20 or 30% of the data set. You don't do the thing which you do in the validation. In the validation, you pass your whole data set, but in a chunks. So that's the difference. In the both states, both states help you to analyze how your model is working, how your model is behaving. In the testing data set, the testing data set is the unseen data for your model, but the validation data set is not the unseen data because you have already passed the 70% or 80% of the data, which comes also in the validation data set. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Uh, yes, Mujib. Uh, hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. 
sir uh, my question is that uh, as you say that uh, the machine uh, machine learning is uh, uh, working more properly and appropriate and uh, efficiently on the small data and so hmm. do you think that uh, it can be uh, it can be helpful in the future as it is only just uh, uh, perform work efficiently on just small data not on a uh, big data so can you explain hmm. actually it's not like that if you have performed your feature extraction feature engineering data preprocessing step very efficiently the machine learning can also work very well big data means when the correlation when the multi correlinearity these kind of features at this kind of metrics arrive in your data so then maybe your machine learning algorithms cannot perform very well so then you go to the machine learning and deep learning but if your data is quite big and this kind of attributes is not available then you still can use the machine learning it all depends how you have performed your feature engineering feature selection maybe your simpler algorithms can also work very well okay sir thank you you're welcome yes 21 el 010 you can uh, unmute your mic and ask the question okay sir one guy has uh, uh, sent it via message that uh, what is the difference between a deep learning and a machine learning hmm deep learning is basically a subfield of machine learning in which you have a neural networks what are a neural network neural network are just like a brain of just like humans which make predictions and do mistakes and they learn from their mistake which has a capability to retrain itself which has a capability to learn from the mistake just like we do mistake and we learn from itself so they like do a mistake and from their mistake they learn and updates itself so that's the deep learning but machine learning don't have this capability so machine learning is a set of algorithms which just train on the data set and make the prediction but machine learning uh, deep learning algorithms are equipped with these kind of parameters and this kind of uh, this kind of uh, hyper parameters which has the capability to retrain itself to maintain itself Sure, I think uh, go ahead and uh, end the section. I think uh, there. Uh, yes, no sir. I think is, uh, there isn't any question. So thank you so much, sir, for your precious time. The webinar was uh, very interactive, very informative, and very impressive. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending this webinar. Hope you guys have learned a lot. So now I am going to conclude the session uh, with this beautiful note. Believe you can, and you are halfway there. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, okay, at last I want to mention something that uh, those guys who have uh, uh, come with their roll numbers, uh, so kindly provide your names uh, so that I can give you a certificate. And uh, lastly, thankful to all audience. Okay, Allah peace. Allah peace, everyone.